years ago when i first downloaded ktia i chuckled at its seamlessly basic and clunky interface unaware that i was a complete novice who knew nothing about the software so one might ask what's the story or what's with ktia and solidworks right why discuss them when they are both products of the same company well the thing is these two software programs, although by the same company, performs differently. If newbies simply choose based on price or ease of use, they might end up disappointed since both software packages play a major role in uh, job opportunities. This video is made with absolute beginners in mind, so I'm not going to get too technical with the explanation. Trust me, I worked so hard on this script so that even people who have never opened the CAD software program before would have that benefit of understanding everything that I say in this video. Before I begin, let me make it easy for you. KTR is a CAD, CAM and a CAE software. It's an all-in-one program, sort of. Pay close attention. AutoCAD SOLIDWORKS and CREO are CAD design softwares. There is more, but for the benefit of this video, we would stick with these. A couple of CAM softwares include InventorCam, Autodesk Fusion, RhinoCam, and MasterCam. For CAE, we have um, SimCenter, 3D, Onshape, Ansys, and Inventor. Now, when you consider Kitia and bulk at its price point, remember it packs the raw power and features of all the softwares listed above. However, many of the individual softwares listed may excel in their specific purposes since they are designed solely for those functions. Instead of questioning um, which is best or powerful between Kitia and SOLIDWORKS, I personally think people should focus on their current skill and be willing to improve on it. Also, the most common software used in your locality should also be considered. The schools available and the job offers available as well. Where I come from, we don't have time for people learning on jobs. So you better know what's required and get the knowledge at your fingertips else you might never secure a job. If you want to work abroad, then you should engage in an extensive research. If you decide to go solo, focus on your specific needs and find a software that best meets them. Otherwise, you might waste money on an overkill product or become overwhelmed and give up, thus jeopardizing your dreams. Card skills are transferable. But don't rely solely on that. Do your research and seek advice before investing time and effort into the wrong software. Took me almost four months to finalize every information that made it into this video. And I tell you what. Before entering into the CAD field, you have to be good at manual drafting. This goes to the engineers especially learn every aspect of engineering drawing and also be proficient in reading and writing any engineering drawing or plan in the realm of computer aided design which is cad software kitia and solidworks stands out as two of the most powerful tools widely used across various engineering and manufacturing industries KTR is a versatile software that covers a wide range of um, users. In fact, it accomplishes everything SOLIDWORKS does and more. Quick illustration will be to design an entire car factory within KTR, whereas SOLIDWORKS takes charge of the cars themselves. And so, if you have a factory, you could build it with KTR since it has the ability to handle complex designs which i'll get into but not now and then um, um solidworks handles the product this is just an illustration for you to have a fair idea where both softwares stand ktr is a giant comparable to siemens nx it's a comprehensive manual software 
very heartless in the sense that it's never going to aid you while working in it you have to use the functions exactly as they are made it won't try to understand what you want to do with the object you've selected the order of your selections also matters a lot it takes longer to perform operations in ktr than in solidworks so it requires much more experience to become proficient never make the mistake of choosing a software simply because it's easy to use okay since i'm speaking concerning ktr being difficult most people and most of the softwares that i've discussed on my channel which i spoke to be difficult to use most people tend to go in for the easier to use versions which i do not recommend unless for some reasons but we don't opt in for softwares simply because they are easy to use but it's understandable if you want to manage cheaper options around the card work is so fluent that skills acquired from one software could easily be transferred onto another software now when we speak like this it doesn't mean that each and every person is going to have it like that right when we say skills are transferable and software is being easy to use it doesn't mean everybody is going to have it like that with some people you would have to provide them with an entire course or a beginner's course to even the most easiest software to use that is why our explanatory videos need to be flexible and versatile with more options um, to enable people make better choices and so we covered how gigantic ktr is compared to solidworks another thing to also consider is stability ktr is extremely stable unlike solidworks and excels at handling extremely large assembles whilst maintaining its stability solidworks tends to fall short in areas um, such as these many users myself included find that solidworks often crashes and fails to uh, made properly once assembles exceed a certain size which i've already spoken of personally i think this is one of the major reasons why most mid range companies tend to switch after a while because um, the thing here is everything keeps improving and evolving right even you you could buy a gadget let's say a laptop solely for research purposes only for you to find yourself complaining because the machine you bought for research now you try editing or something and it's unable to render or it's slow it renders very slow you forget you didn't consider the specs carefully because you bought it solely for research and not rendering right you forget that because as time goes on you begin to evolve and you, the machine you bought for research now you begin to add more tasks and pressure it and it's unable to deliver and so it's natural we would grow out of many things um, quick solidworks after a while might tend to misbehave when you push it hard and so i'll do my best to look into other card softwares within same price range which might be better and maybe do a side-by-side -side comparison with solidworks in another video not now but solidworks is perfect for what um, it offers um, just don't do too much or get complex within the software when it comes to ease of use and user interface solidworks takes the crown there it has a simplified and easy to understand user interface this makes it uh, the ideal choice for most beginners and also startup companies because it's easier to learn and pick up also for companies that are uh, battling with certain financial issues and would want to hire people and pay them cheap so they could learn on the job that would be the benefit we pay you cheap you learn on the job that is what we give you solid works is where most of them tend to start from and it's also quick to help you find a job it's actually one of the main reasons why small to mid companies choose it like i spoke about but this can't be said for ktia its user interface is clunky that's number one looks like a windows 98 user interface to me you don't get no shortcuts that's number two another headache is 
functions within Ketia need to be mastered and followed precisely. The order of the object selection is also very, very important. For this reason, even simple builds could take longer to complete inside Ketia. However, there is a good some advantage embedded within its disadvantage, which is Ketia has a predictable and mathematical approach, which makes it the best choice for complex assemblies. And although it looks weird and slow, most of the biggest companies still prefer it. You could talk of the aerospace industry. In aerospace, the program for an aircraft typically remains unchanged throughout its lifetime, unless there is a substantial investment to migrate data, which could cost you millions of um, pounds. Many aerospace companies still rely on Ketia V5 due to its proven stability. The life cycle of a CAD program in aerospace industry often spans decades because of its extensive production and support required. Aside aerospace, you could talk of the construction of oil rigs, tanks, stadiums, ships, and other large-scale structures imaginable. SOLIDWORKS comparatively would be handling boats, nuts, doors, seats, and other large, relatively simple components and assemblies. This isn't to say that SOLIDWORKS can't build a plane or ship. It can, but you might regret tasking the software with such complex load. Another thing is virtual reality. Virtual reality is becoming very common these days, but guess what? It existed in Ketia for decades. In fact, Ketia is marketed as a virtual product. This means that any work done in Ketia can be simulated in virtual reality. Users can visualize the effect of the weather on a product before they even render it out. Ketia covers essentially everything a company goes through. The development philosophies of both products are different, I mean Ketia and SOLIDWORKS. Although many common tasks can be done on either software, one notable feature is generative shape design. This feature allows users to create aerodynamic shapes from coordinates, and this feature in Ketia is particularly valuable for advanced engineering tasks. Moreover, Ketia is highly expandable with various packages and specialized workbenches tailored to specific needs. Companies can also program macros in Ketia, further enhancing its capabilities. In contrast, SOLIDWORKS is more limited in these advanced areas but excels in ease of use and accessibility for a broader range of users, whilst its surfacing program isn't suitable for creating aeronautical surfaces. You get some basic tools for vehicle styling. Also, pairing SOLIDWORKS with programs like Rhino or the Power Surfacing plugin can significantly enhance its capabilities. SOLIDWORKS was developed to be an affordable solid modeling software for parametric design. Although it's unable to match up the standard of KTR, you get some, you get many plugins to help you work on many different projects. The only issue is its unreliability with dense projects. Okay, so based on the information provided above, let me give you a summary of KTR's learning curve and job opportunities. KTR offers advanced capabilities for high-end design and engineering tasks, supported by its extensive range of over 105 to 107, I think, workbenches. That's a lot of workbenches to master. My best advice will be to focus on essential areas like part modeling, product modeling, an assembly which would streamline your learning process. Part modeling in Ketia is relatively easier, but product modeling isn't. It's a bit complex for the software, and so if you are considering that within Ketia, you would need some level of guidance to understand the two effectively. But for those aiming to work in industries that demand complex surface modeling or large assembly design, learning Ketia can be highly advantageous. SOLIDWORKS, on the other hand, is generally considered easier to learn and for that reason 
has become the favorite choice for beginners. It's widely used across various manufacturing sectors where high precision isn't always essential. Also, um, you have tons of job opportunities out there in need of a skilled solid works artist. And so it's a good place to start to determine which software is more in demand in your area or industry of interest. It's important to research the job market. Some companies may specifically require experience with SOLIDWORKS or KTIA. So understanding the software's preferences and requirements in your target industry can be advantageous for career planning. Now, in terms of cost and licensing options, SOLIDWORKS and KTIA follow different approaches. SOLIDWORKS provides flexibility with perpetual licenses, subscription licenses, and network licenses. Perpetual licenses typically ranges from 6,000, there about to 10,000 euros, while subscription licenses cost between 1,008, so let's just say 2,000 to 2,005 there are about so roughly 3000 euros per year on the other hand ktr requires a custom code for licensing and cost can vary widely based on your specific business needs ktr licenses can be as expensive as 25000 reflecting its advanced capabilities tailored for large scale projects and complex functionalities when deciding which software to learn or use Professionals should, or beginners, right? not necessarily professionals, beginners, amateurs, any, should consider their career goals first, the industry preferences, and the specific demand of the job market. Both KTIA and SOLIDWORKS offers valuable skill sets that can enhance career prospects in engineering and design field. Ultimately, understanding the differences between KTR and SOLIDWORKS enables professionals to make informed decisions about which tools best aligns with their specific needs and ambitions in the engineering world. If you are running a small company or for some reason you find yourself running AutoCAD, now this is just my dead, I would call it a dead tip, you are missing out on a lot. Start considering SOLIDWORKS. Autodesk is outdated. Just wanted to put that out there. Okay, so if you love this video, kindly don't forget to subscribe, like, share. Until my next video, peace out.